guys, it's here. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the entire Natasha Denona bronze collection. We have the eyeshadow palette, we have the cheek palette, and all three glosses. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on these. You guys have no idea how excited I am for today's video. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. So let me stop wasting time. Let's just get into it. We are going to do today's video in true first impression style since I have not put this on my face yet. I've done the swatches. I've done my research based on the swatches, but I want to see how everything is applied. So we're going to do what everybody's most interested first, of course, the bronze palette, and then I'll put a timestamp to the face palette and then the lip glosses as well. But obviously, as you can see, I did get the entire collection. I'm really excited to put this stuff on my face because I look dead. So the collection in general is available right now on Beautylish, Sephora, and on the Natasha Denona website as well. To the UK, it will be coming to you guys at a later date as well as in stores. This entire collection, of course, is summer inspired. Bronze is one of my favorite colors to wear over the summer. I've said this multiple times before on my channel, but first impressions when I saw it online, I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping for something more bright and colorful. I'm ready for that from her, but I knew this was going to be a palette I was gonna like I was gonna enjoy the colors and I was actually going to wear so though I wanted more color in all actuality this will probably get more use from me but I mean this is the perfect summer collection so let's start off with the bronze palette so this palette is $65 it says meet your new go-to summer palette with 15 eyeshadows in bronze inspired shades 24 month shelf life made in Italy alcohol free mineral oil free paraben free not tested on animals <laughs> etc. So the size of each of the pans here are 0.67 ounces or 19.25 grams overall. This is the packaging similar to the Love palette or the Sunrise palette if you have either of those where it's a smaller mini version which I personally prefer. I think the price is much more fair on this. You do get a smaller amount of product but the price reflects that very fairly and then you have these holes in the back where you can pop the shadows out moving them around mix them in different palettes. I love that she's coming out with these mini palettes. I was hoping it would be more in the style of the Metropolis palette, which has 28 shades as opposed to 15, but these are nice too. I do like the hard cover. So let's talk about the color story here. As you can see, it is gorgeous. I would say for me, when I first opened it, I was surprised at the, not lack of depth, but you can definitely see it's a very flat tone here. All bronze, all different shades of bronze. And I mean, for example, let me just pull out the sunset palette which this is supposed to be kind of inspired by as you can see we have different pops everywhere different dimensions all of that whereas you look at the bronze palette it is a little bit more flat looking but not in a bad way because these are stunning colors I still think it is gorgeous and it's going to be so wearable for so many different people ratio of finishes here we have five true mattes and then you have one of her wet powder formulas that came out with the metropolis powder which I by swatching was very impressed by this. I got a lot of pigmentation from this. It's called Deep Dive. I think the formula might be improved. I don't know. It feels even better. You have one I would say satin, which is a very unique shade. This is Rhodium. It's a warm silver purple with a duochrome finish. Really cool, complementary color. And then I would say you have a metallic foiled shadows, and they are all truly foiled. They all swatched incredible. I was immediately impressed with how these shadows swatched. They were full of opacity and pigmentation, very smooth. I would say this one swatched super wet. I would say, you know, starting off with her original 28 palettes, every single shadow of those I felt swatch creamy and wet. It's not the same with this. Every single shadow doesn't swatch creamy and wet feeling, but for the most part, everything swatched beautifully. But I always get questions as to how the formula compares to those original 28s. She doesn't really come out with palettes that have that formula anymore, which is very sad. Are we really doing yard work right now? This video is important. As far as whether or not these shadows are repeat, according to her stories, she did not mention that they were repeats because she will repeat shadows within her own line, but will give the shadows a different name based on the theme of the collection. She did not say any of these were repeats, so I'm under the impression that these are 15 brand new shades to her line. Though that being said, these aren't the most unique shades, so can you get a similar color within her own line? for the majority of these shades, yes. 
but do we really care because this is a really gorgeous bronzy palette also kind of looking at it in the depth that this palette has I do think this is actually going to be more complimentary on medium to deeper skin tones because there isn't really a very light shimmery shade in here all of the shimmery shades they have some warmth and richness to them same with the mattes there are a lot of mid-tone mattes but there's not a lot of fair toned mattes and I would like to see a little bit more deep toned mattes in here just to really add that definition because besides the deep dive right here you only have this as the deepest color I would love to see a very deep dark chocolate so I think that's what is missing and I think if you have a more fair skin tone this is going to be a rich look on you so just be aware of that so I'm gonna do this eye off camera and then we'll come back to do this eye so I can finally get a feel for how these are applying to the eye but I can kind of already tell I'm going to like this. Everything applied so good on this eye. So I'm so excited to bring you into how I did this eye look. So we're starting off with the color Sundown right here. And I'm applying this to the inner half of the crease. I have MAC Painterly Paint Pot down as my base. Ugh. I mean, so much ease. More depth, we're taking some of Ridge right here. And this is going in the outer parts of the crease. And this has a little bit more of an orangey undertone. Not too different from Sundown, I must admit. But they are blending like a dream. I'm just gonna blend them all together. And while I'm at it, I'm taking both Sundown and Ridge again. And I'm just going to run this as the base color for my lower lash line as well. Super buttery smooth as anticipated. We're going straight into the depth and we're taking Magma. Also really excited about this shade because it's going to add some warmth to your look as well. And it's not too red though, and that's what I like. It's more of a muted brown red. And you guys know, even though this palette runs pretty warm, I'm not the biggest warm tone fan. And this is a really good way for somebody like me who will wear warms, feel very comfortable with the warm tone. And I mean, you guys can see that blended itself. We're doing really good, Miss Natasha. And I definitely wanted to try deep dive. Now with this formula, this is supposed to make the consumer feel comfortable using deeper shades with a lot of depth because it's not supposed to be really pigmented. It's supposed to be a naturally blown out kind of formula so that you don't feel intimidated and it's supposed to blend out really easily. And in the past when she's tried these formulas, it was in fact the opposite where it would get patchy and it just wouldn't look good. I really feel like she's improved this formula and mastered it because as you guys can see, this bronze warm smoky eye that we're going for is in full effect with little to no effort. So now it's time for the fun part. So I wanted to show you how silk applied with a brush. I'm using a Refer 21 brush and this was the color that swatched so amazing so I knew I needed to have it for my look today. And as you can see it applies so foiled and metallic on the eyelid. If you want more of that scattered soft effect, use a brush. As always though, with most of Natasha's formula, I would highly suggest just putting in that work with your finger because do you guys see how incredible that is? And then I wanted to add a brighter glow. We're gonna take some of Alloy, which is a brighter gold shade, and I'm applying this right to the center of the lid to add a little bit of fun goldenness to the look like so and then i'm going in with high degree right here now high degree isn't my favorite formula of hers it's not a really wet foiled formula so it does feel a little bit more dry to the touch it's not dry but compared to how some of her formulas just feel so creamy and wet this doesn't have that it still is gorgeous and if you want a really warm red eye this is going to get the job done for you do you see how beautiful this red smoky eye look is. So I'm going in to Magma, which is that deep dark brown red, just to define down here. And literally that's it for this look. I'm gonna do liner and lashes and I'll give you my final thoughts and some comparisons for this palette. All right, we are back, liner and lashes are on. I am loving this look. Overall, from what I can tell so far, and I've played with a lot of Natasha Denona in my time, I think I can give a pretty accurate thought 
got on this palette even without having to play with it further. I think you're getting an overall consistent palette here. Every shade swatched beautifully. Every shade I put on my eye looked beautiful. I didn't have a single issue. Of course, I do plan on doing a, another video where I do a couple more looks with this palette. Just due to time, I don't want to take too long going over looks and shades and colors. So make sure you keep an eye out for that video so you can really see how more colors look kind of on the eye. But I think quality in here is spot on. Are these colors doable? Yes. Would you potentially have these colors in your collection or within her own collection? Yes. But the thing for me with the palette is the curation. And this is a beautifully curated bronze palette. Absolutely stunning. So I'm giving this palette a 10 out of 10. I'm loving it. So I did do some swatch comparisons between other palettes palettes as requested from you guys heavily so I'm going to just go straight into that footage now. So here is a side by side between the bronze palette and the Metropolis palette. You want to imagine taking out all of the pops of colors from the Metropolis but here they are side by side and on my arm here I have the entire bronze palette swatched across my arm and then I have matching colors or the closest colors I could find from Metropolis along the bottom and what I will say there are definitely similarities very complementary I don't know if you can tell but the colors in the Metropolis have a bit more of a pop to them a bit more of a vibrancy not due to a bad formula for here it's just these colors I feel like are a little bit more toned down whereas if you're getting red like you're getting a red if you're getting a copper you're getting a strong copper but there definitely are similar colors but not very many dupe for dupes as I can tell and the ratios are totally off like I couldn't fill every space here but this is what I could find take from it what you will so bronze on top metropolis on the bottom Here's a comparison between the bronze and the sunrise palette. And honestly, I really did struggle to find similar colors between the two. Here is all I got. And the colors in the sunrise are much more vibrant. They have a bigger punch to them. I just don't find these palettes to be really similar when you swatch them side by side. So I'm comparing it to the Bebo palette now. And honestly, I thought these looked a lot closer from the eye, but they are very different. My swatch comparisons are kind of pathetic. There are a couple shades that are very close like prairie right here in the Biba palette is close to this top color that you can see in the bronze palette and a few of the neutrals are very very close but for the most part I would say these are complementary of each other they don't overstep one another and they don't cross paths too much so these are surprisingly much more different than I thought and they actually pair really well together so as you can see there are a few very close shades from the Biba but very very few like I would say the closest are these two colors right here maybe this right here here but other than that I would say very very different. Here is my comparison to the sunset palette. Again a lot of the colors are definitely family members. I would say there is no dupe for dupes here with the exception of like the warm browns that you can see both of them kind of kissing at the end here in the middle. But other than that, no dupes for dupes. Again, more so of a complementary palette as opposed to overlapping. So I'm pretty surprised at how different this palette is compared to the other palettes. And take a moment here to see the colors that I picked out that I thought were similar. This one has some more similarities compared to some others, but they're just similarities. I really wouldn't call them dupes. Now, differentiation on the eye, I can't speak on that, but on my arm, you see what you see. As far as swatch comparisons, yes, there's a lot of similar shades. Could I find dupe for dupes? Not really, but there were similar colors. And on the eyes, you know, they'll probably look the same. I would say the palette that seemed to have the largest number of dupes was the Metropolis palette. I just think this has so many colors and it does have a more similar color story if you kind of look at it at a different way without all the pops of color. Generally speaking, the Metropolis is much more orange and vivid as opposed to the bronze where it's a bit more muted or just that really beigey peachy tone and it's complementary to all of the other palettes that I showed you guys so I think this palette's going to pair well with a lot of other palettes in her collection so that might be something appealing to you I do think this is going to complement those palettes very well so let's get into the bronze cheek face glow quad and I'm not gonna lie first impressions on this guy 
I don't know. I haven't used it, but from swatching and looking at the video she posted on Instagram, I'm unsure. But here are the facts about this guy. So this is $55 and you can create sun-kissed, dipped in bronze looks with this multi-purpose face and cheek palette. Natasha also said in her Instagram that she also would recommend using certain shades on the eyes as well. So in here, it's a quad and like all of her stuff with the creams, they are covered, which is very much appreciated from my standpoint point and so you have two bounce cream formulas you have a glow and then a blush and this is a new formula from her so compared to the tan there is a cream formula in here that is also covered but it's a regular cream this is a bounce cream so it's supposed to have that weird texture where you touch it it has that bounce and then at the bottom here you have two of her super glow formulas so you have a super glow bronze and a super glow nude initially looking at this my personal opinion I really just see a highlighter palette for medium to deep skin tones. Deep skin tones, I really think this is going to look really good on you. On my light skin tone, I'm skeptical, so we're going to get a closer look on that on my face to see. As far as similarities to the tan palette, I find them to be very different. They have very different concepts, very different visions behind them, very different formulas. I don't want to spend too much time comparing them because personally, I think they are very different. So I just want to get into the product itself. I looked at her swatches on Instagram. My swatches do not look like her swatches. My swatches seemed to be drier and less pigmented. I really couldn't get much from these bounce cream formulas and they felt a little bit more dry than bouncy to me. Like they were peeling a little bit. And these two swatched a little bit better but still her swatches were wham bam pow. For me, I wasn't getting much from this. So that's why I'm coming at this with a little bit of a skeptical tone. So I'm just going to take you in and we are going to see what we can do from this. So normally for these kind of bounce cream formulas, I think either a finger or where a sponge is going to work best. So this I think might work for me. This is the Bounce Cream Glow. It's a sheer ivory pink with a duochrome. And okay, as my finger is moving around, it is warming up, but to me it feels a little bit powdery, a little bit more dry. And here's how it's looking on my finger. It's just not giving me much. We'll see. I'm going to try a sponge first because that's how I normally like to apply these things. So I'm using this Kaleido sponge and let's see. This is something where I didn't want to spend too much time talking about it. I just wanted to kind of see how it looked. So it definitely has a strong pink cast on my cheek. Oh, and it's actually kind of pretty. It's definitely not glowy. I personally wish it would have had more of a champagne color to it, but this is showing up better than I thought it would just based on my swatches. Like you can see that pink glow here. And you want to start off with the creams. Natasha likes to layer, so she puts the cream in so that you can put the powders on top. And that's pretty. I'm not in love with it. I think it would show up some more if you had a more deeper complexion. I'm going to take my Kaleidos H1 brush. I'm just going to, yeah, I would use a sponge or even a finger over a brush. This one I'm not sure about either. So this is the Bounce Cream Blush, which is a light cool bronze with a metallic finish. For me, what I thought about for this was it would be a great highlight on medium skin tones or deeper skin tones. I don't know if I can get this to work as a blush, but we're going to try. So I'm dipping my sponge in again. I'm not getting much of anything. I guess it, it has added a little bit of depth to my cheek. I mean, okay, it's adding a little bit of something as I build it up. It's almost like shading my face. I don't know. Dry a finger. I really don't like the texture of this. I think I just prefer her regular cream formula because it's more soft. This is like not working with me. I'm gonna give up on this shade. The Bounce Cream Blush, it's taking too much work to get it to show up. I mean, it did add some color. It did add some shade. I'm not gonna knock it there, but I'm not about to go through this process every single day, you know? I just don't think that that color is worth it for me. These two colors down here, I think are going to be too deep on me. I'm going to use the Super Glow Nude, which is a soft champagne with a metallic finish. I'm going to apply that over the highlight as Natasha did. To me, it swatched a little bit flaky. I'm sure it'll do better applied. So I'm using my H1 brush from Kaleidos. I just tapped off the excess 
Ooh, that's actually pretty. Ooh, did it add a cast? Not really. So surprisingly, this is working well on my skin tone. Ooh, that's really pretty. I prefer this color way more than just the cream color alone, and it makes it more champagne, and that's very, very complimentary to the palette itself, the eye palette. It looks really gorgeous on the cheeks. And I think on a deeper complexion, it's going to look beautiful on you. I'm not going to go and try the Super Glow Bronze. I just don't think in any way, shape, or form it's going to work on my skin. This will work beautifully on deep skin tones as a highlight. She suggested lighter skin tones use it as an eyeshadow, but personally for $55, like I already have a whole palette here. I'm not, I'm not gonna use this on my eyes. I'm just not. Kind of as I expected, whether or not I think this is worth it, for me, my skin complexion, probably not. I'm not a big fan of these two formulas here. This is another example of when she plays with new formulas and it just fails. I'm... I don't think it's worth $55. If you have a lighter complexion than me, there's no way this is going to work, right? Like, <laughs> if you are of a deeper complexion and you're looking for a nice highlighting palette, this is going to work for you. I just don't like the formula up here, so I can't recommend it, but it's going to work on a deeper complexion. So for me, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I like the glow that I have here, but I really had to work these products and half of the products just don't work for me at all. I don't like the blush and I don't like the super glow bronze. I like the bounce cream glow with the super glow nude together. I would say if you're on the fence about this, take what I said with a grain of salt. How does it apply to you in your situation? I'm not as into it. So now let's get into the Lipophorias. So I'm really excited because I personally never bought any of her lip glosses before and this is the first collection of lip glosses that she came out with that I actually really liked and I felt like I would use. So with the Love Collection, I just didn't feel like I would use those. With these, you have these beautiful mute tones that these are the kind of colors that I love so you can buy these all together or you can buy them individually so individually they are going to be $26 each and you have three different colors you have tan nude which this is the color I know I'm gonna use all the time caramel which is a beautiful nude on a medium skin tone and then chestnut which is going to be a deep color on me. So I'm gonna swatch all these for you. Like I said, I've never used any lip glosses from her before. These are a gloss and balm formula, which is very interesting. It's a balm and gloss hybrid. So I'm really excited to try this formula. So it's a deeply hydrating formula, promotes collagen production for plumping and smoothing effects instantly and over time. Each of these are point one four ounces, 18 month shelf life, and also made in Italy. So I'm gonna put on some lip liner and then we'll get to swatching these. I'm using BFF from ColourPop because it's pretty close to my natural lip tone. So we are going to start off with Tan Nude. It's minty, so if you don't like mint, you won't like that. I don't know what to expect. Oh, this is... Okay, it applied more pigmented than it actually was. So it gives you a medium coverage, so I think that's great. It's not too high coverage, but it does give you color, so it's not like you're buying a clear gloss. And it is going to transform the color of the shades you put underneath just enough, but they'll still be able to peek through. So I think this has the perfect amount of pigmentation. It's not too sticky, and it does feel hydrating. I'm liking this, and on my skin tone, I'm loving this tan nude color. So now let's put on Caramel. This is where the true pigmentation test comes in. This is also a nice, relatively wearable shade for me. You have to like a little bit of depth for this. Again, same level of that medium coverage here with this gloss. Not exceptionally shiny, but it is a thinner consistency. And this is really flattering for the eye look that I'm wearing. And let's give Chestnut a try. I do have some leftover glitter on my lips from taking off the others. Okay. So here you can see the true coverage that this gloss gives. That's pretty. It does have kind of a plum undertone to it. Not a color that I would go for a lot, but it is very well executed. So my quick kind of first impressions on these glosses, if anything weird happens with wear time, I will comment that down below for you guys so you can see. But I do really like these colors. I think 
If I wasn't doing the whole YouTube thing, tan nude would be my favorite from this. But caramel is also very nice. If you have a medium skin tone, this is going to look so stunning on you. But these two, I think, are probably the ones that I'll get the most use out of. But it's a really nice formula. It feels very comfortable on the lips. Not exceptionally shiny, but I like these. So I'm going to kind of spruce up myself and then I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on this entire collection. I want to quickly run through my final thoughts on this collection. So we'll start off with the palette. Obviously, as you could tell by now, I really love this palette. I am so looking forward to creating a couple other looks for you guys in another video so that I can get more depth with you about each shadow individually. But as a whole right now, I'm really liking it. I think the quality of this is really nice. There isn't a dud from what I can tell in here, which is something that's always bothered me is that you'll pay all this money for a palette and then there'll be a few shades that just you can't ever use because they aren't very good. From what I can tell, this doesn't seem to have that and I really love the color story as well. Of course, it's not the most unique palette on the market, but I mean, how can you even be unique anymore, you know? I think kind of where you're winning with this is if you love the color story, you love these bronze shades, the curation of this is phenomenal, which makes me very happy to have this in my collection. I don't think she has a bronze palette that is curated like this. So I'm very happy to have this as a member of the family. The bronze cheek palette, I want to continue to work with this and play with this and see maybe if applying different ways, using different techniques makes this different for me. For my skin complexion and anybody lighter than me, I personally just don't see this being worthwhile. Of course, you know, one or two of the colors looks nice on my skin, but it doesn't justify the price. And I'm just trying to figure out these bounce cream formulas. I'm not really fully on board with them. I will keep you guys updated, of course, on my channel, but as of now, not really moved by this. And then the Lipophoria glosses. So far, I really like them. I love the colors that she came out with this launch, so that's why I had to speak about these. Highly recommend Tan Nude. I'm wearing Caramel for the outro, and they're very comfortable, very hydrating, not super shiny. So if you like a super shine, like the Fenty Gloss Bombs, you're not going to get that with these, but they just add a nice light layer of color. I'm liking these so far first impressions. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. I definitely want to make sure I come back to these products to tell you guys more updated thoughts as I continue to use these products. What are your thoughts about this collection? Make sure you comment them down below. Am I the only one that doesn't like this bronze cheek palette? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would appreciate it if you would take the time to do so. That would be awesome and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.